Hey everyone and welcome back to another devlog for this medieval fantasy game that continues to grow out of control like a nose hair in your mid 30s. So at this point in development I want to make an editor so that I can start putting together custom backgrounds for locations in the game and save them down into JSON files. I also want there to be a random generator that can create backgrounds at runtime for generic locations whenever something takes place in a part of the overworld where a custom background doesn't exist. So after a few days of work I've created the basics for the editor. The way that backgrounds in this game work is that they're divided up into these rows that contain ground sprites as well as object sprites of the appropriate scale in relation to the camera. Because of the parallaxing effect it took me forever to figure out the right equation to make the camera center onto the selected object. But with it working it's pretty nice to use and it's already starting to feel like a real editor. As always I use scriptable objects to divide these sprites into groups because later on when there will be hundreds or even thousands of objects being able to select a specific set of sprites to choose from will come in handy. I can also specify whether or not the sprite group should be excluded from a biome since having snow covered houses in the desert for example doesn't make much sense. Now before I continue I need to replace this UI art that I made a while back because I can't stand looking at it anymore. Luckily the artists have made their version of it so I'll add that to the game and see how it looks. This is just an early work in progress and I haven't even bothered making sure I'm using the correct UI elements or anything. I'll deal with that later. For now I was just anxious to see it in game and I think it looks a lot better than it did before. And speaking of things looking a lot better, if you watched the last devlog you'll know that I had some issues making the armors deform. Well I fixed that now by simply using a skinned mesh instead of sprites split up into sections. It's much easier to add new armors this way and it also means that I can make cool stuff like this happen. This solution comes with its own set of problems for sure but at least it looks good enough in my opinion. Now back to the editor. I've added the same controls for the ground sprites as for the object sprites so you can move the terrain around. I'm not entirely sure if this makes sense or if I'll change it in the future so that you move the whole terrain row instead of the individual sprites. But I just wanted to see how it would look if you were able to create these more dynamic changes in the terrain as opposed to having everything be horizontally flat. I don't think it necessarily looks bad but I'm not convinced by it either because it does look a bit flat like an old movie backdrop. Instead if I would make it so that you can only move the whole row in the y axis you can create this rolling hill landscape fairly quickly but you're limited to everything being horizontally flat as I mentioned before. Either way the main problem is still that the steeper you make the hill the flatter it will look as you can see here. I guess this could be mitigated by having the artists create ground sprites that look more like something you'd see in a platformer, meaning that they'd be more like cliffs sticking out of the ground if you raise them high enough. So the fact that they look flat when they parallax would make more sense, but I don't think that's the right solution either. The easiest thing for me to do would be to just limit the maximum distance in the y-axis that a rogue is allowed to be positioned away from its neighbor in front, and keep the steep hills and mountains restricted to the horizon where everything is already flat. Anyway I don't know what to do about it right now so I'll move on to adding the other biomes to the editor instead since the step biome is the only one implemented so far. I'll create the ground sprites myself for the rows that are missing and then when I figure out what is actually needed I'll have the artists make proper versions of them. I've created an editor script that takes all the sprites from the sprite sheets and sorts them into the correct rows in the corresponding scriptable objects. Then when you choose a new biome in the editor, I've made it so that all the ground sprites are set to the default one for that biome. In theory I should also make it so that the sky sprites and the atmospheric fog change as well, since those should be different for each biome to give them a unique look, but I'll also deal with that in the future. 
it feels pretty good to see how all of these things work together. I was afraid that creating intricate environments for the action world using this system would not be possible, but in the end I think it's actually better than what I had hoped for. Don't get me wrong, the editor is still very user unfriendly and it will need lots of improvements before it's 100% ready, but either way I'm putting it to the test here by creating a location from the overworld called Deserter's Glade, which is as the name suggests the headquarters of a minor bandit faction. I absolutely love how this turned out, especially the forest. The art in general has improved so much over the past year and I feel like this is the right moment to reveal the actual name of the game. The game will be called Blades of Deseron. Deseron being the name of the world in which the game takes place. So I threw together this idea for a logo and I've already sent it off to the artist to be polished up. But it might change in the future. I just wanted to have something to show off during the name reveal. And speaking of showing off, take a look at these other environments that I've put together. it for this time. Next devlog will probably focus on finishing the combat mechanics, but since it's a pretty big task to complete, I don't know when that video will be out or if it will be split up into smaller devlogs. So until then, thanks for watching, take care and bye bye.